Please help spread the message of Frequency Specific Microcurrent by clicking on the like button. You can subscribe to us on YouTube or any podcast app. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. You can find the podcast transcription at FrequencySpecific.com, as well as more information about Frequency Specific Microcurrent. Hi. Every week you have a new background. How do you do that? It's the same, but I'm changing the angle just ever so slightly to figure out what I like best. Yeah, I have a thing with, I keep changing my office. I doesn't feel good yet. I'm getting there because my two pictures with Pono Now is in the background. And on top of it is a picture that my old college professor gave me when I came back to lecture as a gift. And it's a painting of um, a river in Winnipeg, my hometown. It's like the old and the new, the yin and the yang. No, the yin and the yang, I said. Oh, yin and the yang. Okay. The be old and the now or the before and the present. In the progress, yes. Yeah. Isn't it? Cool. I'm just going to turn my volume up because you're a little bit quiet. Oh, there we go. No, you're good. My computer was just a little bit quiet today, my speaker. Good Valentine's Day. As you're dozing off at night, I don't know what you guys do, but I tend to go to that place where there is no thing. That place I went before, and when I get really calm it's just always there there is no thing when I do that I the thing that makes that place magic is that the only thing that's there is really it's like the quantum mechanics people they have quarks and all the other little things and then somebody said the word god particle because quarks are made of something Mm -hmm. and somewhere i've heard the phrase the god particle what if the god particle is love what we're all really made of besides mostly space from a quantum mechanics perspective Mm -hmm. you're more space than you are stuff right? Yep. So when I send my head in that direction, who's my family? There's Betty, Kevin, Danielle, Wendy, and Ava, biological family. Mm -hmm. But who is connected by this web of love? For the last week or so, when I lean back into that, there's 4,000 FSM practitioners in 23 countries and all of their patients. Can you imagine how many people love our practitioners? They don't call it love. It's not romantic. It's not sexual. But it's a connectedness that comes from bringing relief where there was pain, Mm -hmm. bringing calm where there was anxiety and despair. That's love. Totally. And when you lean back into that, that is why we are doing this. Mm -hmm. You can tell I finished my advanced slides two days ago. Yeah. Somebody said, oh, this is like your tax season. I'm like, no, this is my Super Bowl. This is my Christmas. This is my homecoming. Family reunion. Family reunion. Yeah. Like the family that you want to see. (laughs) And the focus, I wasn't quite sure how to do it. And I might have to redo it, which always makes Kevin break into a rash. But he says he's used to it. So then I don't feel so bad. And you have to start with why. Why are you doing this? The first why was I wanted to find out if it was reproducible. And then the second why that I never thought of, and I don't entirely know how to language, is once you know that you can get rid of nerve pain and no one else can, why would you not? Yeah. A friend of mine, from 20, I first met her in 1997. So what is that, 26 years ago? She came in, she'd broken her arm. 
and she f- had a bad fall and she broke her arm. She had both things in her foot and she landed with her head like this. And she said, about three days after the fracture, my body started just spasming. And I'm sitting there programming a custom care for her without it, just to, for the fracture. I said, I felt her leg and she went, oh, ow. Quadriceps, brevis, hamstrings, tightness, and spasticity. Hold that thought. Wait a minute. Got a wrap. Put it around the neck. Take your left shoe off because the right foot's broken. Took the left shoe and sock off. Put a wrap around that. Got a precision care. Set it on 81 on A and 10 on B and punch the button. The spasm in her foot stopped instantly. And then pretty soon the leg was fine. And after about 10 or 15 minutes, I said, take a deep breath. I can't. No, really try it. How did you do that? It's when you fell, you have this disbulge in the front that's been pressing on your spinal cord since 1997. This time, when you rammed it back, you jammed the joints in the back. I'm pretty sure that you, the motor pathways in the front of your spinal cord and loss of descending inhibition. She said, Carol, I've seen two neurologists and three doctors, and they don't know what it is. That's because they can't fix it. For us, it's easy. And it's, it's like, how can you not? That's the why. How do you language that? We just took away my whole introduction, didn't you? Um, I I just did my own introduction even without you. That's a first. (laughs) Whoops. No, as we always do, we somehow get on the same wavelength. And yes, it's love. And I I wanted to talk about so many things. And like you said, not in the romantic sense of it. But most of us, when we're have been practicing with FSM for any amount of time, people will say use that word. I just love. And it's not just FSM. And this brings me to my very first quote. So I'm going to share two of my favorite kind of love quotes, but we're going to extrapolate on them just a little bit. Quote number one, I love you not because of who you are, but because of who I am when I'm with you. Yes. We talk about this a lot. We love FSM, but FSM is more than a device. It's more than a list of frequencies. It's more than the effect of their frequencies. It's who you become when you have the ability to use the frequencies, respect the frequencies, and that beautiful web that you just talked about. It's integrate care and take care of patients who come to you to rescue them. And they appreciate you. They love you. They love FSM. But it creates the ability to help in a way that no one else can help them makes you special. And that relationship special. No, it it is special. And there is a profound mutual respect that happens when you hit that level of being present with somebody. I had a new patient last week who said, just the fact that you sat down and you looked me in the eye and you weren't standing and typing or writing notes, but you actually listened to me means more to me than anything. And I I do love listening to somebody's story, but I listen differently now because I'm trying to pick up on all the nuggets that people say is an incidental story that I think is the game changer. Hence, their breadcrumbs. Follow the breadcrumbs. Yes. FSM, I love the effects of it, but I love who I am as an FSM practitioner and how I love that shirt. <laughs> Kevin made a shirt. Yes. We have so much stuff that he has created, the team has created, that will have a QR code. You scan the QR code and you can order it in the color you want, the size you want. We don't have to carry inventory in the garage and ship it. I am using the same company. They are fantastic. And then that way, you you don't have to ship things and people can just get it. Although I do have, I'm going to share it right now. I did have very special hats made. I want one of those. So this is the. So jealous. 
But these hats, that's from a brand called Boco. They have this beautiful weave. So they're really great for running and for summer and all that. So that is my little special thing right there. But oh, that is awesome. Those are cool. Thanks, Kevin. You got one. You always get the new swag. I always bring some for everybody. But oh, we have another one that they just designed at lunch today. That's going to be fun. Yeah, it's, it's fun to do that. And again, it's about just being proud and having your brand and just being excited. I'm, I'm excited to practice with the device, but I'm more excited about the way of thinking that we have been blessed with. Mm-hmm. And to have that respect coming back from physicians and surgeons saying, I can't believe how much progress you got with that patient having somebody who inevitably needed hip surgery, but a physician calling me up and saying, how is she still walking? I'm like, she's been seeing me regularly and we've been able to keep the tissue healthy and keep her strong when she should have been in a wheelchair. So there's so many things. I think as practitioners, sometimes we get caught up with limitations, stand in the way of an inevitable hip replacement. But I think of all the progress in what we did in two years, creating strength and tissue flexibility. So going into surgery, being excited about this new hip that is going to give her better quality of life, as opposed to, I can't believe I have to do this. So there's so many things I think that we get to do outside of inflammation and scar tissue, because it's not just about that. And the toolkit that we create as an organization, as frequency specific seminars. When you think about what we do with our education, it's not about selling machines. By the way, microcurrent technologies is coming. They are bringing their technicians. They're gonna take part the precision care, the custom care, so you can see what's inside and the quality that's involved. Mm. I think David said they're going to be doing some faceplate replacements, but he's afraid he's going to get swamped. So he's trying to figure out how to manage that. Yeah. And that's the first time we've had our device manufacturer there. I'm really proud of them. And I'm going to leave that alone. The morning is FSM for people that have heard the advance before They get you for three hours. They get David Musnick for three hours. The advanced, the afternoon is how to know more about the conditions that walk in your door and how to integrate FSM. Mm -hmm. So the whole advanced is about making you a better practitioner. Mm -hmm. Some years, there are little fragments about how to make you a better person. And every now and then we slip those in and everybody cries and it's really nice. But that's what I love about FSM is what we are creating is excellence. The practitioners who are listening, the 34 of you that are here in person and the 250 that are here on YouTube tomorrow and for the next month. That's the why yeah. is patience. And the why is the practitioners. My vision for us as a community has evolved. The bar is here. And my vision for us is excellence because. That is how patients find the relief they can't find any place else. Yeah. I saw five doctors. Why didn't anybody know that my neck injury is why my body is spastic? Right. Because they don't understand descending inhibition and they don't understand descending inhibition because they can't do anything about it. Right. The fact that we can fix descending inhibition in 30 minutes, the fact that we can fix Ehlers-Danlos in 60 minutes makes us look for it. Nobody else has. 
Right. I'm sure you've come across the same thing too. It, it becomes the quick label that everybody loves to throw on something. I almost pulled my hair out yesterday seeing a triathlete that I have seen so many times is one of the biggest advocates of FSM. She loves me. She has a custom care. It's kept her functional, I think, in many times where she would have had total body failure from being an Ironman. However, she came in with, oh, I have a new diagnosis. It's bilateral hip bursitis. And I'm rolling my IT bands. You have no idea what, and she's like, I know this hurts you to hear that. And I'm like, yes, bilateral hip bursitis. I have no doubt in my mind that your bursas are irritated after running as much as you do, after cycling as much as you do. Sorry, go. I can't actually, it's going to create anger. It's, and it's a lovely day and I want to stay in my happy place, but what I wanted to say is I think people are like, why are you content with that label? You have bursitis. Why does anybody think that rolling your IT band is going to help? Even if what you have is bilateral hip bursitis, why would anybody think that damaging the TFL is going to make the bursa happier. I, I have no doubt in my mind that foam rolling can be beneficial because it can increase good circulation to vascular muscle. And in my three hour talk, I unpack a big part about foam rolling, especially the delicate tissue. I show some really cool visuals of what the IT iliotibial tract actually looks like. It's non-contractile. It doesn't contract tensor fasciolata, attaches above IT, absolutely contracts. Glutamine, everything around the bursas, absolutely mobilize that tissue. However, when you look at the makeup of what the iliotibial tract is, it's a very thin fibrocartilage. It's non-contractile. It needs circulation. It needs vitality. And it needs gentle it, movement and foam rolling is going to tear it. It's going to create micro trauma to the area. And then what happens after micro trauma, inflammatory process gets out of control. What happens? More adhesions. So you end up, what's that saying? Cutting your nose off to save your face. Like it, it doesn't make any sense. So I said, you can absolutely roll. You can roll your glutes. You can roll your hamstrings. You can roll your quads, stay off. And I put a band on her leg, stay away from this area. Thank you. So, when patients tell me things like that, I get really quiet. And then I say, this is why we do not keep adult beverages in the clinic. <laughs> it, it would have been that time, but excuse me one moment. And then, no, and that's when you do some deep breathing. And but you did a better job. You're much more diplomatic, but then you're younger. Wait till you're 77. Then there's no filter. And it's, yes. I, and she's heard me say that before. And I think sometimes when you're in so much pain, to be able to have control over something that even maybe creates more pain, but in the short term, maybe makes it feel a little, a little bit better. I think that's why some people still love going for really aggressive soft tissue treatment because they feel like it's productive. They don't see the big picture that it's creating more tissue damage. And endorphins are distracting. Absolutely. And especially with athletes, they want that hit of no pain, no gain. And I absolutely was that therapist that had my elbow in someone's piriformis. I did it. I think a lot of it is patient education. Why are we doing this the way that we are? But also, like I said, I think practitioners love to throw out labels. You have bursitis. Okay. I'm going to challenge that. Of, of course you do. You're a runner. Why is the bursa upset? What does the bursa do? Why do we have bursa? And of course, nobody who's in healthcare can understand that question. So again, a bursa is there to control the friction. Why is there friction? Why is that muscle tight? What is the bursa trying to protect against? And so we unpack that a bit more. And then the practitioner should be asking, why is the bursa upset? And the, the way FSM works, if the external rotators are really tight what do we look at the internal rotators mm -hmm. it's not the piriformis it's not the external rotators it is but the thing you have to look at is the pectineus and the adductor brevis 
And it's about following the spark. It's about doing the exam to see if this is rotated this way, what does it look like up here? What does it look like on the left? What does it look like on the shoulder? And when you can, what is your why? I, I ask that to the teenagers that I work with. I I, them. <laughs> what is your why? Why? When we talk about young athletes, like who want to play at a certain level, why? Why do you love playing? Someone says, why do you love doing what you do? I love to have that patient who comes in pain and leaves without pain. I love having people run faster and lift harder and, and all that stuff too. I love helping. And if I can't help, I love hooking somebody up with somebody that can help them. It doesn't matter to me mm -hmm. who, who does it. It's collaborative and FSM has absolutely driven that point of community and no ego and being humble. Don't you love being us? I do. And you've always said that to me, even when I was new and I thought I kept making mistakes. And then these little baby miracles happen week after week. And I would share them with you. And you're like, don't you just love being us? I really do. I love being part of this little club. <laughs> and the other thing that's really fair to say, and I guess I have to put it on a slide because I say it over and over again in the core, it is not possible for anybody to make as many mistakes as I've made in the last 24 years. It's not possible, especially the first eight years. And the patients I want to go back to 98 through about 2005 and do over, except I just shredded 85 boxes of charts, so I can't do that. But what we can do now because of all the things I couldn't do 24 years ago, yeah. and because I finally learned that the frequencies only do what they're described as doing, right? Yes. 40 in 10 reduces pain. In my life, I never would have thought of running 81 in 10 right. until I heard of descending inhibition in a transverse myelitis patient. I ran 40 and 10, reduce her body pain, and her hamstrings cramped. And literally, her, she's laying on her stomach and her knee bent at 90 degrees and a hurt heck. And it's 40 and 10 did that? What if I ran 81 and 10? And I ran that and it worked. And then I called a friend of mine that's a neurologist and said, What did I just do? you increased descending inhibition what's that right that was 2004 or five but i didn't put it together with the tight leg muscles that are associated with fibromyalgia from spine trauma right and with just a central disc bulge that presses on the motor pathways when you look at that diagram in, in netter mm -hmm. where the blue pain pathways are on the side and there's this little v of red motor pathways and one of those little red dots is descending inhibition of spasm and when the disc is central it pushes on that pathway irritates it and slows the signal you don't become spastic Everything gets tight from right. your toes, literally to her collarbone. And so it was like, yeah, it's just 81 and 10 here. Let me do that while I cut program your custom care for your fracture. Mm -hmm. I love being us. Like you said, it's about thinking your way through something, though. Not pulling out the PowerPoint PDF and searching for something. It's... Or running some pre-programmed thing that somebody else programmed because that's what's on your machine. It, right. You need to have custom cares, but a job is to think. And my patients are so great who have custom cares. They know to bring it to every appointment because I'm going to change it at every appointment. Just tweak it. Just tweak it. Because if you're doing your job, that program is probably after a week, it needs an update because... You something else is going on. 
everything except concussion in Vegas, which stays at the top. Absolutely. And yeah, there's some frequencies or some protocols, there's no chance I'm tinkering with it, but I love writing my own programs for patients. I think patients enjoy having something that is uniquely theirs and uniquely theirs for that moment. And when you change the program, they're like, oh, I don't need that one anymore. No, you don't. That's better. But let's address this because compensation is a thing and we want to make sure everything stays I always say, I want to make sure everybody's playing in the sandbox nicely. And when you have compensation, there's always going to be one kid that throws sand and somebody else leaves and the big kid brings in its bully friend and then it becomes like drama. Mosh pit. Exactly. (laughs) It's happening in your shoulder. Yes. Yeah. All of that. Isn't it? Yeah. And look, there was another thing that happened this week. I had this patient who drove from... I think she drove down from Seattle, but she wanted me to fix her frozen shoulder. Okay. So she's had this frozen shoulder since August of last year Okay, when she fell okay. landed straight on her butt and her arm was out behind her. So she landed on her butt mm-hmm. and jammed her shoulder all at the same time. Then I looked at her imaging. The fall was in August. She had an MRI showing p- tendinosis, partial thickness tears in January, February, March, April. Her doctors, no one would order a new MRI. And no pain unless she moves it. Then she moves it in certain directions. I torn and broken in the tendon, inflammation in the bursa. And I said, I'm not touching it until Mm -hmm. I get a new MRI. I need to find what the labrum's doing. The partial thickness tear you had in that tendon, what did, Mm -hmm. I'm not touching your shoulder. Yeah. And that was my gift to her. She said, oh my God, thank you. I've been trying to get imaging since last August. I said, nobody is to touch your shoulder until you have imaging. And that's, I've sent so many people to get referrals, to get imaging done, because not to scare him. It's like, why are you, oh, you're scaring me. And I said, no, this is just to get a really crystal clear picture of what's going on, because that's going to enable the therapy to go in the right direction. The exercises to go in the right direction. We want to make sure healing is always progressing in the right direction. And And would you buy a pair of shoes without measuring your foot? (laughs) Data is a wonderful thing. Are you a size nine and a half, a size seven? And you stand on this little thing and then you move the thing and it tells you that you're a size eight and a half. Would you buy a pair of shoes without measuring your foot? No. But people have been fine with working on her shoulder without new imaging after looking at the hit weight. That was April and you fell in August and landed that way? Yeah. No. No. Just So sometimes... What the FSM community learns is not just frequencies, it's what is your why? Yeah. What is there? Right. Yeah. I I had the same thing. Someone's back was just doing uh, certain therapy was creating pain. Certain exercises were, was creating pain that shouldn't have created pain. Yeah. That means, and the last time they had imaging was 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, there was already something starting. So I said, best case scenario, it looks exactly the same on the images as it did 10 years ago, and we can keep progressing. But doesn't it make sense to just make sure that everything is still in place the way it's supposed to be? As I use a construction metaphor, you got to know where the drywall, where the studs are before you start rearranging the drywall. Absolutely. But it didn't make sense to me that nobody had asked new imaging because I'm new on the case. So that was the first thing I'm questioning. Since managed care came in the 80s, medicine has become about taking care of the insurance companies. And the truth of the matter is that MDs especially, but probably PTs can't order films, the patient back to an MD And he is part of a group. There is someone whose job it is in management to keep track of imaging and testing that each doctor orders. They don't mind them writing prescriptions, but imaging and testing. And if this doctor orders more, 
than else in the group, it, they're going to talk with him because it costs the group money in managed care. That's my impression. I may be wrong. I've heard and I agree with that. I, the patient that I, I don't think my doctor, I've asked for an MRI before and she need one. I tell doctor, Carol's playbook, to document and chart that she is refusing your request for chronic back pain for imaging for an MRI. Just say, I want you to put that in my chart that you're my request for imaging. I understand why you're not going to do it. I totally understand. I get it. But I just want it written in the chart yeah. so that in case something happens three months or six months from now and something happens, then we have a record of when I asked for it. That'll protect both of us. Right. Starts thinking about her malpractice insurance and the order gets written, usually. Thank you for that yeah. Okay. We have a couple questions. I think we have two, but um, let's go. ones that are here. I'll just go from the top down. Yesterday morning when I got to work, not me, I'm reading there. I had to do some snow shoveling. This resulted in a weak feeling and dull ache in central line L5S1. So after work, I gave myself a treatment, ran acute disc basics with 77, um, microcurrent at 90 microamps, basics, at 100 with PEMF, when I got up from the table, center line pain was gone, but I became progressively stiff, right SI joint area. By the time I went to bed, it was a six out of 10, dull pain, made it hard to sleep. Today, the pain has gradually subsided and now it's fine. What's up with that? Yes, I was hydrated. You want to answer it or I do? I know. Go ahead. Okay. Think about what you do when you shovel. Okay. You have uh, about 15 to 25 pounds of snow on the end of a three foot lever, which means that you are flexing forward, rotating. So you do that and you're bracing with one foot. So your SI joint, probably on the same side as the low back pain. No, low back pain will be on the left. The SI joint will be on the right. So you're shoveling lifting that compromises the disc so yay acute disc good decision basics with 77 and the basics with 100 so the si joint is connective tissue and ligaments 77 and 100 you get extra points for that and the solution would have been 124 77 and 124 100 and probably inflammation in the periosteum, if you look at the architecture of the SI joint. Mm -hmm. So you tightened up just by doing the basics. I'm going to guess you tighten up the SI joint. You bulge the L5S1 disc. You fix that. You tightened up the SI joint. Of course, it became stiff because you put it back together. Mm -hmm. And that's when the inflammation took over. So you brought the joint back together and the periosteum had an opinion about having the connective tissue and the ligaments torn. Sorry about the dull pain. And then the pain has doubly subsided. You got lucky. So there have been somebody to do an exam on you. You would have had more pain when you flex forward, hence the acute disc. Your SI joint exam would have been slightly positive, not torn. Would have run just what you ran, only more time on torn and broken and a little bit of love on the periosteum, 40 because the inflammation doesn't really set up for about four hours, but the inflammation takes off. So that's why it was a six when you went to bed. Mm -hmm. Then it rested. The immune system did its thing. The periosteum got over it because you made growth one hormone when you were asleep. And then it subsided. Now, yeah. if you have a friend who is a PT, wouldn't hurt to put a little rock tape on your SI joint for about three days to give it a little help to run a cute disc every night for about three days, land in your stomach, do your little teeny exercises and nice job. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great for, because it's so hard to self-diagnose and to think through the steps on your own body. So, um, so yeah, I, I, my little nugget would totally be agreement. 783 was what I was searching for throughout all of this, because the shearing that takes place, not only with the disc, but like you said, with the staggered stance that one does as a snow shoveler. And I'd spent most of my life in Canada. And it was funny in our practice management class in college, 
it was so funny. This was before cell phones, right? So this is, we're talking about where to advertise on the TV guide and where to leave your business cards. It was after a big snowstorm, all the therapists got super excited because of all the slips, falls and shoveling um, injuries that there's going to be. <laughs> Because I wrote my thesis on pelvic um, instabilities, sacral torsions are one of the things that we look at. And that's essentially what happens with shoveling. You have, it, it just, the mechanisms are just perfect with that staggered stance, flex forward rotation. You've got the long lever on the SI fulcrum. It's just all bad. So you said it best. You have to treat your SI like you have a sprained ankle. So thinking about the periosteum and just how that sacroiliac joint looks. And when it gets irritated, it shears. So the periosteum, so 40 and 783. And I like 124, 783, just because of the micro trauma in that joint. And the good news is it was only your SI joint that hurt, which yeah. means that what you sprained was the lower joint, not the upper joint. You didn't. Right capsule yeah Yay. because yeah. had you torn the capsule you would have nerve pain all the way down your leg and you just had an ache in your SI joint so what Kim said about treat the lower joints some more yeah and let's hire some 14 year old in the neighborhood to shovel snow yeah. <laughs> just no and then we have a couple I'm going to pull up the emails if you want to read Nina's well I have a client who has had ongoing pain for 11 years no evident trauma at the onset, putting on her pants, has had several surgeries to try and resolve it, which have not made it worse, thank God. A diagnosed with adhesive arachnoid. Okay, I'll be fine. 40 and 10 helps, yeah. Bring the pain more than she has experienced, but then she'll have a spike in the pain that evening for hours. No, nope, not infection. So. The first question was, where was the pain? That's the only thing that's missing, Nina. And if somebody diagnosed adhe adhesive arachnoiditis with an MRI, we do have a, a, a great case report that is actually... You're frozen for a second. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> oh, that's me going, yeah, I know. Pain is in the sacrum... Okay, the first thing, good news was two surgeries in the wrong area. What? Okay, adhesive arachnoiditis does not hurt in the sacrum. The arachnoid stops at T12. It's the inner part of the dura. And adhesive arachnoiditis is the middle layer. So the pia, the arachnoid, and the dura. And arachnoiditis, you can see on MRI the little bundles of scar tissue to the nerves at the cauda equina where the arachnoid is, is adhered. So this case I'm presenting and I'm hoping to get published is there's a pre-MRI showing the little dots of scar tissue at the arachnoid it all tangled up. Then the four weeks of treatment, they did another MRI and the radiologist said, the scar tissue is not as bad. Oh, how do you get... Perhaps. Arachnoiditis was diagnosed with an MRI. Okay, arachnoiditis causes pain down the right leg. The surgery for arachnoiditis is tricky. At the advanced, I'll show you the treatment that they used in this case report for arachnoiditis, but it's obvious. It's the pia, the arachnoid, the dura, the cord with scarring 13, 51, fibrosis, the 58s, and down at the phylum, which is the very tail end of the dura, there's a little fat pad that gets stuck. So sclerosis in the cord and sclerosis in that fat pad. Scarring, so pain down the right leg, your little $19 pinwheel. Check the sensation in the right leg. It's probably going to be L5, could be any of them, honestly. L3 down to the knee, L4 down to the medial ankle, L5 down to the lateral calf and the big toe, S1 down. 
the back of the leg, S2 down the back of the leg. So use your little pinwheel, find out which one's icky. Mm -hmm. uh, and then remember that if it's arachnoiditis and it was diagnosed by an MRI, then you put the contacts probably around the neck is the easiest. Mm -hmm. And you could put the other end down on the right leg or the other end down at the end of the arachnoid, which is at about, let's say, L2, and then run a second machine from whichever nerve is painful from that level across the low back down to the foot mm -hmm. and treat the nerve pain separately and then treat the arachnoiditis with the fibrosis and very gentle movements. So you might want to treat them sitting up if you have a rocking chair or a comfortable office chair they can sit in. Mm -hmm. So you can do it neck to feet and have them mm -hmm. gently flex and rotate that area. Once you loosen the scar tissue, you have to break it by getting the patient to move. I have something exciting that happened yesterday at the clinic. My treatment room is 10 by 20, and we set up cameras, four, four cameras and a shotgun mic to record the treatment table, and there's a, a mixer over in the corner that shows, used to be on a big screen TV, and that was too scary, so Kevin got me a little teeny monitor where I can see all four cameras. I've been there for three years. And I have not used that video system once. And this week, because of one of the patients I saw, I have every patient fill out a timeline. Mm -hmm. She said, and her history is on a piece of paper, three feet long. And all the years, all of the events. And she said, I was not about to write that out as a Word document and have it in the cloud because then it's accessible to anybody that can hack it. Mm. And so I have a little rolled up piece of paper. And then the conversation we had about what her life was like from here to there and then how she turned it around and it went to there. When somebody's being filmed, the whole dynamic changes. The kind of conversations we have, the kind of things we need to know to do the right job, the kind of relationship we have with patients is just different. Yeah. And whether you spend the standard 30 minutes or 60 minutes with a patient or whether you get lucky like me and you can say, I'm spending three hours and it's going to cost you $600 and, and I'm fine. I'm booked out until next May, but I'm okay. Anyway, so I decided... Well, that's not going to work. What are we going to do? Break it into pieces and videotape those pieces. What are the hints in the history that make me look? Mm -hmm. so this lady was talking about, oh, I was always spraining my ankle. And I said, put your hand here and do that. And it stopped at 70 degrees. She's over 40. Then I had her do her elbow and I actually managed it is minus 12, did her knees, minus eight. Okay, now you have historical hypermobility syndrome and you used to have this, but that's why your gut doesn't work. That's why your vagus nerve has been off since you were basically five. And then I knew what to fix. We're gonna do it in segments that people can look. What are the hints? What are the breadcrumbs that you follow that make you look for a vestibular injury? Right. I got rear-ended at 45 miles an hour with my head turned to the right. And part of her timeline was anxiety. Mm. And then the only question was, how do you feel about going to Costco? And it goes, to Costco. how do you do in the rain? Terrible. Okay. Her BFASS score is 46. And it was just, so we're going to do it that way. And I just thought I'd tell you. What do you think?
Now, I, I love it. When people come to see you, you have a an edge that most of us don't have, right? People come to you and I could be wrong. I think they're more willing to give you all the breadcrumbs kind of off the bat. Whereas a lot of us other practitioners, there's more to the story. They're just not, it's not safe for them to say it out loud yet. And it, it's required. Absolutely. You have to do a timeline. The other thing that everybody listening needs to know is you get to borrow it. Right? They found out about you, but they found out about you because they read the resonance effect, because right. they saw me online, because they looked at our practitioner list on the website. Yeah. It's over 100,000 hits a year, right? Yeah. yeah, it's the most. So they find me. There's that credibility. Mm-hmm. And then they find you and you and all of you. So they walk in the door expecting you to be me. And so it's my job to give you what you need to be able to meet that expectation that they don't even know they have. Right. Does that make sense? It, it does. And I am so grateful for the people who find me through the web, this matrixy, webby, interconnected thing. Mm-hmm. I am so grateful for the patients that this is probably too much information. I'm like, stop it. There is never too much information in this room. So whatever you think, if you think it's relevant, it's absolutely relevant. Everything is the things that they don't know are relevant. She did think that a 45 mile an hour rear ender in 2018 was relevant to her current full body neurologic pain. Because nobody ever could connect those two things or because why else borrow yours? Because they couldn't treat it. So nobody would put it together who couldn't treat it together. They don't put it together because they can't treat it together. Yeah. And then the timeline is it's a request, but the year and what happened, the year and what happened, high school soccer. Then she says, I've had chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia since I was 10, but you played high school soccer. So let's pretend the chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia either went away in high school, or maybe it wasn't there when you were in high school. Mm-hmm. What happened in high school? And then I played soccer automatically. For me, that means the next thing you hand them is the BIVSS. Mm-hmm to look for a vestibular injury in somebody that has chronic fatigue and a vestibular injury contributes to that, right? Where did you live? Yeah. Yes. We could go on for hours and hours. So the fact that we have three minutes left makes me just a little bit angry sometimes because I feel like we just start scratching the surface when we get to this point. This wasn't a scratchy surface thing. This was a dig deep. It was a profound um, episode and I'm grateful for that because I I feel like sometimes we do get caught up in numbers and frequencies and diagnoses and imaging and that's great, but there is just so much more to this that is so hard to verbalize until you get to experience it and then you just want to shout it from the rooftops, just like when you're in love, right? And the, the community that we've created for me anyway, the sense of excellence and the quality, the devices, the case reports, the research, the practitioners, they're not all MDs, but 30% of our practitioners are MDs, but every single clinical profession we attract, number one, they're all nice people. Mm or we don't let them in the club, excellence. They aspire to caring and intention. It is so much more than you ever know possible. And that's what keeps everybody, I think, coming back. So I do want to close with my second quote. I love your quotes. 
this one is more, okay, I'll just say it first. Love does not consist in gazing at each other, but in looking together in the same direction. Oh, ain't that the truth? That so I feel like as every year goes by, especially in the last little while, I feel like collaboratively we're all moving in the same profound direction. And as far as I can tell, we're all looking at the same future. Yeah. FSM is an adjunct. It doesn't mm-hmm. replace acupuncture. It doesn't replace medication. It doesn't replace naturopathic or Chinese medicine herbs. It certainly doesn't replace physical therapy and rehab. Yeah. It's an adjunct for every profession that aspires to excellence. Absolutely. Amen. Yes. Yeah, that's my quote for the day. I love it. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Thanks everybody for coming and sharing, and sharing and all the warm, fuzzy things that we got to do today. We just have all this warm, fuzzy stuff. And if you think about, if you feel, feel what comes at us, it's like, oh, thank you. That feels all warm and fuzzy and back at you. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks everybody. And we'll see everybody same time, same place next week. And thank you, Annie. Same back at you. See you next week. Everybody. Bye. The Frequency Specific Microcurrent Podcast has been produced by Frequency Specific Seminars for entertainment, educational, and information purposes only. The information and opinion provided in the podcast are not medical advice, do not create any type of doctor-patient relationship, and unless expressly stated, do not reflect the opinions of its affiliates, subsidiaries, or sponsors, or the hosts, or any of the podcast guests or affiliated professional organizations. No person should act or refrain from acting on the basis of the content provided in any podcast without first seeking appropriate medical advice and counseling. No information provided in any podcast should be used as a substitute for personalized medical advice and counseling. FSS expressly disclaims any and all liability relating to any actions taken or not taken based on or any contents of this podcast.